All right, welcome to my video on Doc Evil, the greatest triple triad player of all time. So let me start by saying I am completely unqualified to make this video. I never knew Doc. I don't even know what avatar he used. I just picked one for the image of Dr. Evil from the Austin Powers movies. Um, but I don't know him. I never saw him play. I can't talk about his style or what he did so much better than other players. I don't know what his avatar was. I don't know what cards he liked. He played before Occult Fan took off, so articles only mention him very briefly, so I can't really glean knowledge of him that way. Delial was incredibly easy to write about because he was mentioned 20 times per article, he was active while Occult Fan was active, and recognized as the best for much of that time. Here, Doc Evil, very often recognized as the best, but not during the time I have records of. So all I've got, all I can go on, is, as his qualification, is the tournament records he had. And maybe that's all we need, because his tournament records are incredibly impressive. And three tournaments is very limited data, but what if those three tournaments are so good that they still give him an excellent case, maybe the correct case, to be the greatest of all time? So let's look at his three tournaments. In his first tournament, we can see here that in the first round he defeated Seed Mog, in the second round he defeated Gambit X, who put up like a pretty solid tournament record over the years. In the third round he defeated D-Back, who I believe was a quite solid player, especially known for hand building. In the fourth round he defeated Sphere, which is one of the huge names of the early days. In the semifinals he defeated Mafi Josie, who I have ranked at this time probably like third or fourth in the world, a very strong player and then beat Diddy in the finals, who was a short-term tournament player, but did very well in the tournaments they played. This is quite an impressive starting run, and this is the first tournament Doc Evil ever played. Then we go on to the second tournament, SE Kuros. And in Kuros, we can see in the first round, Doc Evil beat Uziel, another huge name of the early days. In the second round, he beat Kamikaze, who if not for Doc Evil, would probably have been considered the greatest of all time shortly after this, and yet just wasn't, because Doc Evil clearly was in everyone's mind at that point in time. Uh, but that's a huge win for Doc. Kamikaze had already had great success. Kamikaze made the quarterfinals in his first three tournaments. Uh, in the third round, he beat Slim. In the fourth round, Titus, uh, one of many very solid, very good Polish players. In the fifth round, he beat C-17, another really prominently good player of the early days. You can see C-17 knocked out Mafi Josie in the previous round, no easy feat. And in the finals, Doc defeated Ulti to take down both his second tournament and a second tournament in a row. In Doc Evil's third tournament, he beats Noir in the first round, then Juanito, then Karn. In the fourth round, he knocks out his first really big name, a regular top 10 player in the world in Grat. Uh, Dream Virus, another long-term player, regularly ranked very highly in the fifth round. In the sixth round, it doesn't show it, and I should have listed it there, but in the sixth round he defeats Sujiro, whose name you can just see at the bottom, though not in the round that's actually relevant. But Sujiro, another just one of the top 10 or 15 players of all time, beats him in the semifinals. And in the finals, Doc loses to Beast Day in one of the weirder tournament results of all time. Now, my last video, I was corrected on how I pronounced a bunch of the British names, and so I suspect Beast Day, who is, I believe, British, I am surely pronouncing wrong because I pronounce everything wrong, and this video is pure misinformation. But this was Doc's third tournament. Doc made the finals, which is a great run, and this is Doc's only loss in the history of Triple Triad Advanced Tournament play. So everything he did is a tournament record. Doc won the first tournament he ever played. Only three other players, Cow Stepanair, Firebrand, and Broccoli, can say the same, that they won the first tournaments they played. And Cow, it's just definitionally, he won the first tournament ever played, and whoever won that was going to win their first tournament, though of course huge credit to Kaus for doing so. Doc won his second tournament, and to win their first two, uh, first two tournaments is a feat no one else is even close to. Uh, Broccoli took six tournaments to win her second, Wazuk took seven, Great Sephiroth took ten, and those are the only three players other than Doc to even manage two tournament wins in their first ten played, and Doc did it playing two. In Doc's third tournament, he made his third finals, and even though he didn't win it, you can just compare to the speed other people took to make their third finals. The only other people to do it in their first ten tournaments were Slash of Time, who took eight, Wazuk, who took nine, and Great Sephiroth, who took ten. And again, Doc took just three. 
Doc also won two tournaments in a row. He's the only person to do it in his first two, but also there's only o only one other player in history to have won two tournaments in a row, and it's Yojimbo, who to his enormous credit did manage to do it twice, but he had played over 25 by the time he did so. And Doc did it in his first two tournaments. He had one shot and he did it. And it's something only one other player in history ever did. And they took much longer. So if you look at his legacy, in mid-2007, a panel voted on the best players ever. Um, there were six voters, and they were each going to list who they thought were the ten best players ever. And Doc Evil was one of the only two players to receive a vote from every member of that panel as one of the ten best players of all time. When I came up on the site in 2008, I just knew him as a name, you know, someone spoken of as, that guy was the greatest, no one's ever going to do what he did. And, to tell you the truth, no one really ever did. Uh, there's an article in 2007 by Kaus Stepanair that said, There is no doubting that Doc Evil ruled TTA in his time that he was a member. This was in many facets of the community as well. He served as a coder, creator of the TTA Center, staff member, and, by the way, he only lost one official tournament game, and that was to Beastay in the finals of SE Tifa. If that statistic isn't dominance, I really don't know what is. And this was in an article just declaring, Yup, Doc Evil. He is the GOAT. And I think through the end of 2007, he surely was. He had won two tournaments, no one had won more, and he had done it playing far less than anyone else. So the question is going to be, does other people's overall accomplishments, does them having played so much longer and achieved more, is that going to be able to outweigh Doc Evil's incredible achievements in a limited amount of time? So Doc went 19-1 and in tournaments, or 95% um, of the longtime greats on the site. No one's much above 80%, um, and there are a lot of greats in the 70s or high 60s. Doc's 95%. The only comparable number, the only, the only one, is another short timer. Of course, short timers have a better chance to randomly spike a high win rate. But again, he's so far ahead of the field, and only Karmazin, who played two tournaments, is within 10% of his win rate, which is just ridiculous. So what is, what's the arguments against Doc? So he didn't last very long. So we have very small sample of evidence. That means both that other players, you know, achieved more over the time they played, got more tournament wins, beat more top-end players, did things that you just, you can't accomplish in only three tournaments. It also means he played in a very short amount of time. He played in late 2004 and early to mid-2005. And that means he only played the opponents on the site in those eras. So if you think that Triple Triad gained a lot of strength over time, the community got better at playing, there were stronger high-end players, then he didn't really face those top-end players and never got tested there. And that's always going to be something that you just never know with a short-term player. You never see what they do against different types of opponents in different eras. And then my final question is, can someone who only played for three tournaments be the GOAT? Can you have done enough in those three to surpass every other great player that ever played? Is his peak high enough that he surpasses others' longevity? And this is, you know, a huge question in lots of sports and competitions. Peak versus longevity. Do you like Michael Jordan or do you like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? You know, most people there like Jordan. But Doc Evil has a much shorter peak than someone like Jordan. You know, examples like that choose peak over longevity. But what do you do when the peak is this short? Now, I think the dot case has some pretty good answers to these questions. For instance, games do tend to get better over time. Sports get stronger, faster, smarter. But one really important reason for that happening is that sports tend to increase in popularity over time, partially because world population is increasing, and partially because sports that stick around tend to have growing player pools, um, aside maybe baseball currently, which I think is getting smaller. But in general, more players coming in means the range of players and the top end of players gets higher. And that wasn't really the case here, because Doc Evil played it close to the site's activity peak overall. So I think there's a good case to be made that, yes, sports do increase in skill over time, but that wasn't necessarily happening here as much as it does in other comparable competitive games. And then another thing is he may not have played many tournament winners. You know, his case is going to be limited. He's not going to have played too many top-end players. But he did beat both Kamikaze and Sujiro, who I think are both certainly in the best 15 players to ever play. And he only lost the one game to Beast Day. So he's 2-1 against tournament winners. 
Very small sample, but it's the third or fourth best win rate ever, tied third, fourth, um, of anyone with at least three games played against winners. And that's already, like, really high up there in a small sample. And the two players he did beat, Kamikaze and Sujiro, both really shown at the time they primed, which was around when Doc Evil played them, but they both had comebacks in 2010, where Sujiro made the finals of the site championship and Kamikaze won uh, Squall. So both of them showed that they they transcended era. They were not just guys who were great in 2006-7, they were also great in 2010. And these are the guys Kamikaze beat 2005, a little before their peaks, but not that much before their peaks. And Kamikaze was already having incredible runs regularly, and Sujiro, of course, made semifinals when he beat him, so it was clearly a very good player. So I think, and if you look at other players he beat, Mafi Josie was very good for a long time, Grat was really good for a long time, Dream Virus was really good for a long time, C-17 was good early, then disappeared, then came back and was quite good. These were not easy brackets, and these were beating people who had long, impressive careers, and their careers mostly hold up regardless of era. And so I think the era complaints about Doc, he is a very good rejoinder to, because he can say, look at the guys he beat. He beat people who were beating people years later. So if now, now let's just make the case for Doc. If we look at ELO, which I think is the kind of best straightforward to do all-in-one rating system, chess uses it, other sports use it, you can see here he is a full 130 points ahead of the field. We have Kamikaze rated third, we have Sujiro rated fifth, we have Dream Virus and Mafi Josie rated sixth and seventh, all really good players he beat. Later down the list you can see C17, Grat, Sphere, uh, Karmazin. He didn't play Karmazin, but these are all great players he was competing with. You can see Titus. He's 130 points ahead of the field. This is the third biggest lead of all time, and he only took three tournaments to do it. If we look at how quickly people gained ELO rating, it's not even close. Doc gained rating far faster than anyone else because his three tournaments were so tremendous and against really highly rated opponents at the time. And you can see he's just far ahead of Karmazin, who's in second, and way ahead of longer-term players like Wazak, Yojimbo, Great Sephiroth, MC and Nightwish, Seto. You know, his rating gain per tournament is just off the charts. Um, you can also look at how much you broke the previous record by. So what was the rating record before you came along, and what was the rating record after you had set a new high? And Doc Evil set a rating record 85 points above the previous, which is the second highest uh, record-breaking margin of all time. And again, he took three tournaments to break the record by that much. It's just ridiculous. So I think, I think until Delial won his third tournament, until Delial won Irvine, Doc Evil was unquestionably the greatest of all time. He'd done more than anyone else, and he'd done it in far less time than they took. And the question is, once Delial wins three tournaments, once other players start achieving more than Doc Evil achieved in Doc Evil's incredibly high peak, do they surpass him? But I think from Doc Evil's side, what you gotta say is, he did something in three tournaments. Did anyone else even tie that? Did anyone else do as well as he did in his three tournaments? Is anyone even close to what he did in his three tournaments? Because these other great players, they played 20, 30, 40, 50 tournaments. Did they ever have a three-run tournament run as good as his was? Because if they didn't, surely his peak is so much better than everyone else who had numerous chances. He only had the one three tournaments to play. You know, if they don't compete, surely Doc Evil has the best peak and is the greatest triple triad player of all time. So if we look at the best three tournament runs of all time, I found seven runs I thought were just very impressive. I did not adjust for opposition, so if you actually looked at the slash of time, ooh, there's a typo here, Delial is supposed to be 12 and two. If you actually looked at the opposition here, I think Delial's run is the most impressive of these three, though slashes is close, and I think cookies is a little weaker, but these are three of the best seven runs, slash won a tournament, made round four, and then final to the next tournament. Cookie in three consecutive tournaments had a quarterfinals, a win, and a semifinals, as did Delial, though, as I said, I think against tougher opposition, and I would move that up to fifth. Um, Doc Evil, for comparison, had a win, a win, and a finals, a much better record than any of these, and these are three of the top seven runs ever. So let's fill in the top four. We see was up 16 and 1, a win, semifinal, and win. Seto, 14 and 1, win, round two, and win. And Yojimbo, who is the only player to match Doc Evil's win-win and finals. And you'll notice it's only 13-1, and 1, 
That's partly because of activity wins, but more than that, it's because tournaments got shorter over time, and Yojimbo achieved this run at the latter end of the site when tournaments were just five rounds, while Doc Evils were seven rounds. And it's a lot harder to win a seven-round tournament than a five-round tournament. So if you look at Yojimbo's opponents, his run is shockingly good as well. But my point here is, Yojimbo played 30-40 tournaments. You know, most of these guys played 30-plus tournaments, and their best three tournament runs are at best maybe almost as good as Doc Evil's three tournament run. Yojimbo matched a win, a win, and a finals, was up, came closest to having the same record over three tournaments, but Doc's is the best, and he took three tournaments to do it. It was his one three tournament run, and he did that. And that's just incredible. So the case for Doc Evil, he won at a higher rate than any other player. You know, 95% win rate is just so much higher win rate in tournament games than anyone else did. He played three tournaments. That gives him one shot for glory. You know, he didn't get another three. He couldn't try again. He didn't try again. And he is the best three tournament run in Triple Triad history. There is no one with a higher peak than Doc Evil. There is no one who during their run dominated more than he did. So some records he set. He has the highest win percentage of all time at 95%. He has the highest rate of winning tournaments at 67%. He won two of the three tournaments he played in. There's a couple players who won one of two, and most players' tournament win rates are of, of the all-time greats is more like 10, 15, 20%, and he's at 67%. He's the only player to win their first two tournaments. He's the only player to make finals in their first three tournaments. He's even the only player to make semifinals in their first three tournaments, and he won two of them and finaled the others. He's one of only two players to win two consecutive tournaments. He's one of two players to make three consecutive finals. The other is also Yojimbo. Huge credit to Yojimbo here. He is one of four players to win their first tournament, and he was rated top of the world from mid-2004 to mid-2005. So there it is. Doc Evil doesn't have the longevity of someone like Delial, but there is no one that did what Doc Evil did, and Doc Evil did it his first tryout. He just won. He won, he won, and he made the finals. And no one can really touch that achievement. And so there it is. Doc Evil, the greatest triple triad player of all time. So, who you got? You got the achievement, the well-roundedness, the 6-0 in the finals record of Delial. Or you got Doc Evil, who played three tournaments but did something no one has ever done, and basically no one came close to, even though they had try after try after try to do what he did, and he just won everything he played. So there it is, Doc Evil, the greatest of all time.